Raiders get on the board early, but Tampa Bay stormed back to hand the drive their first loss of the season. Tampa Bay gaining a share of the lead lead. Tonight, the drive hopes to get back on top alone and bring a victory home from Dallas. Live from Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas, Fast Sports brings you more hard-hitting arena football action. Tonight, the three-time defending champion Detroit Drive pay a visit to the Dallas Texans. It's hot in Dallas, over 100 degrees today, but fortunately it is cool in the Reunion Arena. Hi, I'm Larry Adderley along with Jim Brandstetter for this Detroit Drive football action. It was a good season, Jim, for a while. But Monday night, the Drive suffered their first loss of the year, and frankly, quarterback Art Schleicher did not have a particularly good game. Art Schleicher had maybe his first game of the season, and the Drive lost their first game of the season. And Art Schleicher, in order for this club to be good, and the Detroit Drive to win their fourth arena ball championship. Art Schleicher's got to play well. He's the key. Every time the Detroit Drive get the football, in every possession, they feel they must score. In order for that to happen, Art Schleicher must play well. And the key to him playing well, he's got to get good protection. And that's what didn't happen against Tampa last Monday. And the kicking game could be a little better. Novo Boyovich did not have a good night. Novo Boyovich, to be perfectly honest with you, tonight might be on the bubble. They might be looking for somebody else if Novo does not come out and kick solid against Texas tonight. The drive, 5-1 and one on the year, still tied for first in the league. The Dallas Texans are 3-3, three and three, a team looking to go somewhere. Drew Pearson is their coach. Alfred Jenkins, their quarterback from Arizona, is now in his seventh game and getting to feel more comfortable in arena football. Came out of Arizona as an option quarterback, and in arena football, you've really got to be able to throw the ball better. Alfred Jenkins got some great guys to throw it to. Somebody like Atron Kenny, who is absolutely world-class speed. This guy can fly. Sam Moore is also very good. He's got to get the ball to those guys to make the Dallas team offense really work. And for the first time in the last 10 games, Coach Tim Markham has to get his drive team ready to play following a loss. Will that be a problem? Well, I hope I don't have to get the troops ready, so to speak, because I hope we've got the right people that will respond to the loss and, and come back and play. You know, we, we didn't play very well in Joe Lewis uh, Monday night, but hopefully we've corrected some mistakes and uh, just the overall effort will be much greater and be at a higher intensity. The drive and the Dallas Texans in arena football, the kickoff coming up in just a moment. Pumped you in part by Anderson Sales. By Big Boy Restaurant. Come in for dinner and see what there's more to love at Big Boy. Quality food since 1936. By Blockbuster Video. By Budweiser, the king of beer. Nothing beats a buck. By Little Caesars Pizza. By Mobile One. Mobile One synthetic motor oil. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? By Murray Discount Auto Store. By Ramshorn Restaurant. The Ramshorn has that personal touch for you. And by Subway Sandwiches. back to the Reunion Arena. A pretty good crowd on hand, Jim, and it might be safe to say that 90% of them are here for arena football. The other 10% have come in here just to escape the smothering Dallas heat today. Well, I'll tell you what, it was 97 degrees when we got off the airplane, and it was hot. It was like walking off the airplane and walking into a sauna. And here in a Reunion Arena, it's air-conditioned, it's beautiful, you can't get it.
second with the drive. Come on, Reddick, you got to get you in position to set this up. <laughs> to receive. Now the drive gets a good break, and they win the toss, and they will get the ball first. And as we talked to Tim Martin before the game, Larry, the big thing that he said was that every time we get the ball, we have got to score. I mean, that's the way it is in arena football. We don't go out there thinking we need three. We want to get into the end zone. And in offense, Arch Schleister has got to get the job done. And if you'll notice, Arch Schleister wearing number seven. He normally wore number 10, but 10 got torn up pretty good against Tampa last week, so that one isn't going to be on him. He's wearing number seven tonight, and we asked him before the game, he said no special significance to that. Just the fact that number 10 was torn up, his normal number, and he's going with number seven. The fact that his jersey was torn apart, an indication of the lack of support they've given him in terms of pass protection. Well, you can see that he's done an awfully good job for the Detroit Drive, throwing for better than 1,100 yards. And the big key is there you see only three interceptions and 21 touchdowns. That ratio is outstanding. You don't like any interceptions, but he's been throwing off his back foot because he's been backpedaling because the pressure has been getting to him up front. The offensive line has got to do a better job of protecting. The other thing I think you're going to see the drive do is throw the ball a little quicker. They're not going to try to go deep as much. They're going to try to throw it quicker, give more timing patterns, so that Schleister doesn't have to hang on to the ball and let his receivers run deep and let that pressure have more time to get to him. Gary Mullen, George LaFrance are deep for the drive. Jim Power teeing it up just on the right hash mark. Power, a kicker from Southern Cal, was having some trouble with these at the practice hitting the scoreboard. But he got that one right where you want it to be. Off the net to LaFrance. No running room at all. Dropped to the five-yard line as LaFrance is met by Jeff Hurd. Uh, I tell you what, it looked like he had a lot of room, but Hurd closed it in a hurry. The offensive set receivers for the Detroit Drive. Gary Mullen, number one. George LaFrance. Leads the league in almost every category, receiving and scoring. Dwayne Dixon, a heady receiver, runs the tough routes over the middle. In the backfield, Alvin Reddick, the lone running back from right. Art Schleister, the quarterback, wearing number seven, as we said, on first down. Quick little out pass. And a mix-up in communication right away as Dixon stopped running the pattern, and the pass landed about five, six yards in front of him. Finishing that offensive set for the Detroit Drive. The blockers up front. John Rolfe from Iowa. John Corker, who does the greatest uh, rushing job defensively. And Ted Henning, Northern Illinois. Second down and 10. Loops it underneath, hit Mullen. That's near a first down. And complete. Well, Gary Mullen that time saw the cushion that Newsom, the defensive back, was giving him, and he was laying off five, seven yards. Fleischer got it out there, and look at all that room. And Mullen just stopped running his deep pattern, turned around, made the catch underneath Newsom's coverage, and it was good for the first down. So the drive on second and ten converts Fleischer. Now one of two in the passing department reads as the game goes on between the quarterbacks and the receivers. That's so important that they're both on the same page. LaFrance, high motion, down the sideline on first down. Complete to Dixon, far side. He's got another first down to about the 21-yard line of Dallas. A two-man route, Gary Mullen and Dwayne Dixon both running in the same area, and Mullen drew the defense inside. Dixon broke it out to the sideline. Fleischer again, good protection. The block by Reddick, the key. Took the defensive end down. Dixon came wide open at the sideline and then did a great job running through the defensive back for the first down. Alex Morris tried to bring him down but couldn't get it done. First and 10, again, LaFrance high motion, a little offside from the Dallas team as Reddick dives over the 20 yard line, but that penalty will get him at least three. He might have a penalty against. Detroit, they might say that Corker, who was the right end over there, rocked. Or they'll call the offside jump on Hurd, big number 65. 
linebacker in the second neutral zone, three yard penalty. Now there's a call we saw against Detroit, against Tampa. Your officiating crew for the night. And in this fast paced game, even though they're covering a smaller field, they do have their hands full. All that high motion. A receiver going full tilt at the line of scrimmage, and that's a difficult call to make if he's behind the line when the snap is made. Second down and seven. Over the middle, knocked down. Beautiful defensive play by Alex Moore. Morris. Now, Morris made the play, but Arch Fleischer, again, did not make the great throw. Fleischer's got plenty of time to throw. No pressure. He throws this ball a little bit behind Dwayne Dixon, the intended receiver. If he throws that ball out in front of him, Dixon makes the catch. The receiver, or the defensive back, Morris, never has a chance to come underneath and make that play. Fleischer's got to lead him a little better in order to let Dwayne Dixon run to the ball rather than wait for it to get there. Because if it waits to get there, that defensive back will make the play. Now second down and seven. LaFrance again in motion. Outside pattern. Caught, apparently, by Mullen <laughs> behind the, below the boards where we couldn't quite see it at about the six-yard line. Boy, Mullen made a great catch. He was falling down. Fleischer threw the ball low and away where he's supposed to on the sideline run. But watch Mullen catch this ball. Falling down through the hands of the receiver. Now, he's not touched, and he can get back up and run. So the defensive back, Newsom, has to come back up and make the play. But it's first and goal drive. Again, LaFrance, high motion to the right. Reddick on a sweep. Penalty flag is down as Reddick gets to about the three-yard line just by knifing through a bunch of tacklers, but that'll be a call against the drive, a holding call to nullify a penalty, or a nullify a game. Looked like it was on Hennings, number 75. The referee threw it right in his direction, and, and holding, offensive holding in this league is a tough penalty. It's five yards and the loss of down. But as Markham was talking to us today, Jim, if there is a time to get a penalty like that, it is first down so that you've got time on this small oh, field to make offense, something up. In five yards penalty, or fourth loss down, of down, down, second down. Yeah, if you get the holding call, you certainly want to get it on a first down where you've got a couple you of downs me? to make it up. We don't have an 89. We don't have an 89. Tim Markham not happy about the call. We've got him with a sideline microphone and... They apparently called it on 89, Dixon. Dixon wasn't in the play. That's what his complaint was. Second down and nine. A little motion from LaFrance. Looking for Mullen. He's being held, and it's knocked away, but they, they saw the hold. I think everybody in the... Whoa! Unhappy about that situation. Anthony Newsom threw a punch on Mullen, but uh, you saw it. He says everything's okay now. Well, he was being held, no question about it. Mullen got open, then Newsom tries to come back in, but both flags were thrown. Now, Mullen gets up, heads back into the huddle, and Newsom hauled off and gave him a left hook right across the jaw, and I don't think there was any flag thrown at that point on that play. The referees were all running with their back to the play at that point. Let's see the call. Automatic first down, and that is the key. Hey, let's go. Come here. Let's see what they want to do. Run the draw to the right. Now, there's, there's the one. How about that? There's a, all the... He didn't write them out. <laughs> he's, he talking them out. Of, he's talking about, of course, Newsom pounding on Mullen, but that's great for technical football. Let's run the draw right. Kind of like the old Sandlot days. First down on the five-yard line. There's Dixon with a little motion. We know what's going to happen. Reddick busted inside the five to the three-yard line before he is hauled down, wrapped around the ankles, Mitchell Ward, 44. Now, the draw play at that point, you know, you're thinking about in the arena football whether you get yardage, you're inside, but you've shown the defense that you will run. You will use Reddick as a runner because the drive has tried to sweep a couple of times. They've thrown mostly. That's been their success. So you let the defense know, when we're down this close, we will try to run at you. And that gives them an extra thing to think about. Second down and three. At the Dallas three. The drive keeping this drive alive. There's Dixon open. Fleischer couldn't get it to him. Knocked down. 
He had LaFrance. He had Dixon. He didn't get it to either one of them. And it's third down and three. Well, the one thing the driver doing certainly is keeping this thing alive. Let's go downstairs to Tim Markham. Left high low, 38 tall. Hey, who's seven? Seven. 37. Uh, now the 38 and 37, that means at 37, the ball is on the right hash, which means he's got more room to the left. So the 37 play will come toward our camera. If you take a look at the last play, Fleischer probably shouldn't have thrown that ball in there because that was into some danger. Third down at the Dallas three. Reddick, sweet dive, touchdown, Detroit drive. A three-yard dive by Reddick. Good blocking got him to the point, but the last yard was his alone on the dive. And I tell you, it was a good call by Markham in the sense that he saw the defense loading up. And so what he did, he just said, let's run behind our big guy, Ted Hennings, out there. We got a good block from Dwayne Dixon and pitch the ball to Reddick and see if he can turn the corner. From five yards, he can dive the last three. So all he needs to get is two-yard penetration. He did. Reddick scores the drive to draw first blood here in Dallas. Novo Boyovic for the extra point attempt. Block. A couple of other elbows being thrown, but no harm there. They just missed the extra point. But they're moving on. Held the ball, did a good job on that drive, and the drive leads Dallas 6-0. Back with the first Texan possession in a moment. That's a real advantage as the drive not only got points on that first possession, but they probably took a possession or two away from Dallas in the way the clock goes in this league. Normally in this league, you can get four possessions in, in seven minutes, and the drive really took four possessions out of there. Now let's see if the defense can get it done. Boyovic to kick off on the far side. Deep. Jeff Jenkins for Dallas, but this is a great kick. Right through the upright. Jenkins is in trouble at the one-yard line. He couldn't get it going, and Alvin Reddick wrapped him up right around the ankles and dropped him. The Texans will start at their own one-yard line. Great play by Reddick as he got down inside and made sure that Jenkins couldn't get out of there as you take a look at the scoring drive. And that 639 time of possession in arena football is rare. You don't keep the ball that long in this league in a 50-yard field. But the drive did, and that's to their advantage. Alfred Jenkins, the quarterback, in trouble on his very first possession. Reddick got to him. Penalty flag is thrown as the receiver plucks open. John Mo Sam Moore. Nice little hook pattern, and he got about eight yards. Well, oh, Reddick was right there, too, on the blitz. Automatic first down. Tim Markham not happy about this circumstance. The penalty against the drive, automatic first down. That gets the Texans out of the hole. No, he didn't. He, he lined up on the wrong side and, and blitz. That's the problem, Alvin Reddick. He had this problem last week, and that was one of his difficulties that uh, Reddick had. As you take a look at the offense for the Dallas Texans, the burner is Atron. Mitchell Ward, they call him the Ninja Turtle. He is a tough, hard-nosed running back linebacker in this league. Jenkins, high motion. Looking for him. Got him, but out of bounds. Out of bounds indeed. Well, it's pretty clear in the first two possessions that Dallas has. They want to throw the quick out, the quick passes. They don't like the fact that Detroit's got John Corker out there because both passes they've thrown have been quick three-step drops to avoid getting any kind of a run on Jenkins. Tate Randall on the hit, one of the defensive substitutions the drive will make. Everybody plays both ways, with the exception, of course, of quarterback. There's the line set for the Dallas section. Heard, Denard, and Postar is the tight end. They'll use him in their pass pattern. Jenkins lost the ball and got it back and has dropped at the five-yard line. Dixon was on top of him along with Billy Harris. You know, I think it was Alvin Reddick who got a hand on his arm as he flew by and popped that ball loose. David Evans, one of the defensive specialists that goes into the game. 
Number 26, and Kate Randall. 29. They're the guys who are always on the defensive side of the ball for the drive. Jenkins having a pretty good year. But getting used to arena football in his first season. Third down and 11. Knocked down by Dixon as he tried to slip one over the middle. And so that really put the, the Texans in a hole. I tell you what, the drive playing better defensively. You know, earlier in this drive, we saw Alvin Reddy get the call for illegal defense. That caused a problem for him last week and really put him off his game. We talked to him before the game about that. Well, they did have a big impact on the way I played because the rules, they, the officials don't know the rules yet, and by them not knowing the rules, it takes me out of the game by having to find the, tell them the rules and tell them what's right and what's wrong. It gives me a hard chance of going out there and doing my job. A 62-yard field goal attempt. LaFrance has got it at midfield and crosses into Dallas territory. <laughs> hey, there were two blocks on that play, one by Fleming and one by Corker, that put a couple of guys from Dallas down into San Antonio because, I mean, they were cracked back blocks. They didn't hit him in the leg, which is illegal, but they hit him up around the chest and both those guys from Dallas absolutely hit the deck in a hurry. Whoa, Larry, that's some serious hitting. Take a look at these blocks. Boom, there's one. Here comes Fleming. Boom, there's the second one as LaFrance makes a good return over the midfield strike. 24 yards on the return. First and 10 from the Dallas 24. Dixon, high motion. Schleister, good protection. Penalty flag down, and Schleister throws one into the stands. Penalty flag thrown in the backfield, and perhaps against the defense, Sam Moore. He's got his hands on his hips and not looking very happy about it. It is a call against Dallas. As Schleister goes over to see what he can do with Tim Marcus. Three yard penalty, repeat the down, first down.
Schlesser flushed out, throws it deep off the screen. The live ball intercepted at the one-yard line. The interception by Jeff Atkins. That's the break of arena football as that one is still live coming off the screen. And when we come back, it'll be the Dallas Texans in possession at their own one-yard line. In the end zone or George LaFrance, rather, so he threw it high off the net, hoping he'd get the friendly carom. He didn't. Ball came back, was intercepted by Dallas, and even though time of possession is 841 to 403, which in this, in this, in this game, that's amazing, the Dallas Texans still find themselves only trailing by six, a score away from taking the lead. Well, they've had two possessions, both at their uh, inside the two-yard line. This one will call the two as it's just between the one and the two. Not a very good place to start. The officials are checking with both Drew Pearson and Tim Markham on the clock. They don't believe it either. Eric Anderson goes in to the lineup for the drive, number 33. Tim, not a happy camper at this point. Nope, should have a bigger lead. First down, Dallas. Jenkins trying a little sweep, and that won't work. It's a safety as the tackle is made by Troy Knight. Well, there's a big, big play for the defense, and Troy Knight gets the job done. Nobody blocked him. He came right off of his defensive line position. Nobody blocked him, and he came right upfield and made the tackle on the ball carrier in the end zone. That's a big two points, Larry. Puts the drive up 8 nothing. And Dallas will have to kick it back from their own, deep in their own territory when we come back. Fleischer saw him wide open, 
drew it up there, and the, you see there's nobody within five yards, and Art drew that long ball and let LaFrance run underneath it. He didn't throw it short, which has been one of the problems he's had early this year. Novo Boyovic for the extra point. First one was blocked. That snap is high. But the kick is off. Novo is looking for a call here. So is Tim Markham. They're looking for a call from the official. They can't rush a guy from outside a defensive of uh, the offensive He's coming outside! That's his complaint. Tim is saying you cannot rush the kick with a man outside your last man on the line of scrimmage. You've got to block the kick from up the middle. That's the rule of arena football. Now let's take a look at where the man rushes from. If he comes from outside the defensive end, he came around him to get there. Novo pushes it off to the right, but I think his alignment was correct. We're having a problem with the clock, Jim. That's what that announcement was about. The clock has been at 2.16 on the scoreboard since before the safety. So we've got less time than we think in this first period. The drive, 14. on the right page and learn the dang rule. The guy can't come from the outside or we're going to start coming. You understand, understand that? that? Whose call is that? The guy on this side. Well, then you tell 29 to get his head out of his tail. A little lesson in uh, how to officiate the game from now, Jim Markham. This is beautiful because now you know what coaches say to officials. He kind of kept it, let's put it this way, he cleaned it up. He could have been worse, but he let the official know he wasn't happy with the way things were going. You know, when you hear a guy talk about how they work the officials in arena football, Jim Markham's working the officials. One play, 33 yards, Fleischer to LaFrance. The kick missed. The first one blocked. This one just offline to the right for Novo, but a much better kick. Still a 14-0 lead thanks to that safety from Troy Knight. Yeah, well, we'll be talking to George LaFrance at halftime tonight, too. He's uh, the leading receiver in the league. Uh, he's just got great speed, and he's having a wonderful year in arena football. George, to be perfectly honest, would like to be playing somewhere else. They've declared this the start of the second quarter, so that takes care of the clock things. We'll be back with a second quarter of action in just a moment. Born of the finest natural ingredients, then fruits and eggs with extra care for that clean, rich, cold taste. The taste only Budweiser can deliver. Drive. 
This is the third possession for Dallas. They had yet to start outside of their own five-yard line. You can see what they've managed to do with that, too. Minus yardage. Little movement from Sam Moore inside, outside. That's who Alfred Jenkins wanted was Moore, but he had to throw it in the seat or get sacked for another two points from John Corker. <laughs> Corker let him know. You know, John Corker let him know, hey, I'm around. Don't think you're going to get away all night not getting drilled a couple of times because John Corker's the guy on defense that the drive must get pressure from. Score from out of town, a big score for Detroit, too. In the first quarter, Denver leads Tampa. Three to nothing, and uh, if Denver could knock off Tampa tonight, that'd be a big, big one for the Detroit Drive. John Corker, hard rusher on defense all the time, and second down and ten. Jenkins lost one up, got it. Completed to Sam Moore. Oh, a wobbly pass that was not a thing of beauty, but there is a penalty flag back at the five-yard line, and that may be a break for the drive. Tell you what. Moore made a great catch. Evans had real good coverage. And this pass, a wobbly, little bit of a duck. But Ron Moore with the concentration stays right with it. And Evans is right on him. Right with him step for step. That's just great concentration and a great catch. The penalty is against Detroit. So the penalty will be declined. And that play will stand. Well, look at this ball. Almost end over end. Evans had an arm, tried to pull the arm free, did, and even with one hand, Moore was able to hang on to that football. There's a fine catch by a good receiver. 37 yards gained on the play. It's first and 10 at the Detroit 11-yard line for Dallas. That gets them out of their minus yardage situation anyway. Boy, that ball can be tougher to catch than a, than a good spiral because there's a lot of things can happen as it wobbles into your hand. Especially when you get a defensive back pulling one of your arms away from it. Jenkins being chased. A little screen pass. Dixon got there and slowed down the runner. More help arrived in the form of Randall and Reddick. Well, Mitch, Mitch Ward was the guy who made the catch. And I want you to know, this is a great play by Jenkins. The pressure comes from Corker. He beats his man outside. He manages to maintain his composure and find Ward. Uh, Dwayne Dixon should have probably made the hit there and made the tackle, but Tate Randall came in and made sure that Ward wasn't going to go any further. So a gain of approximately three yards. And right now the Detroit Drive defense has to really put on the stops because at 14 nothing in this league, that's not a big lead. Two-yard gain, they call it. Second down and eight for Dallas. Just over the nine-yard line of Detroit. Jenkins with a little motion. Penalty flag. Jenkins falling down, hits his man. Complete touchdown to Atron Kenny. But there are penalty flags all over Reunion Arena. Well, John Corker was getting held. I know that. But there's also a flag in the secondary. Could be on the Detroit drive. Now, the hold happened before the defensive penalty, but they're going to have to sort this out. Take a look at the play one more time. Pretty looking play. Yeah, Jenkins stumbles a little bit. You see Corker? He was just grabbed by his left arm and tackled. And Hennings is also being held, but he runs through it. Sorting out the penalties. The penalties are on both sides, so the play is nullified. Basically, what you've got is no play. Tim, Tim Markham working there with David Evans. He... Evans is the guy that in most instances will take the other team's best receiver. Now it's uh, Drew Pearson's turn to talk to Alfred Jenkins on the far sideline, see if they can straighten something out. We go back to the same circumstance, second down and eight at the nine-yard line of the drive. This was the situation the drive was in last week against Tampa. They didn't perform. When they had a quarterback in trouble or third down and goal, they weren't able to make the big play. Jenkins lobbed it deep off the hands of the intended receiver, Jeff Jenkins, and a penalty flag is down. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is Alfred's brother, Jeff. Holding call against Dallas. Big, big play there. Now Detroit pushes him into a third down. After a loss of down, it'll be more than 10 yards. So the Detroit team got themselves some good things happening on defense now. You don't want to be a photographer sometimes in any football league, uh, Jim, and this is probably one good reason why. 
Cruz. And that's, that's not cheap equipment that gentleman was carrying. And now wearing. <laughs> A break for the drive as the Texans are backing up. It's third down and 13 from the 14. No motion. Rare in this league. Jenkins way overthrown as Randall had good coverage on Sam Moore, the intended receiver. Now, maybe Jenkins, okay, is, let's face it, we saw Corker hit him in the end zone after he released the ball at the beginning of this drive. He threw one wobbly pass that was caught and has been falling down throwing the ball since that time. So maybe that hit that Corker leveled on him has had a bit of an effect because that pass was overthrown. The one before that where the receiver ran into the cameraman was also poorly thrown. Maybe Mr. Corker, even though he didn't get a sack, did get the point across. A 30-yard field goal attempt from Jim Power. And it is good. Up and over everything. Didn't get caught in the net, but more than enough for the 30 yards. It's Detroit 14 and Dallas 3 when we come back in the second quarter. everybody to do that to him. Mullins split wide left, top of your screen. LaFrance the motion man. Placer for Mullins deep. Eee! Oh, he put it on the money, and there's the penalty flag as Anthony Newsom just crawled right up the back of Gary Mullins. Once again, Placer with time, Larry, is able to set his feet to get that ball out of there. Take a look. See, look, he's able to set his feet, plant off the back foot, and throw the ball long. Nice tight spiral. A little bit underthrown yet. The defender comes back over the top, and I think it's the left hand around his neck. And it was right in front of the official. He threw the flag. Automatic first down for the drive. And this is Tim Markham like football. Air it out. Get it downfield in a hurry. Throw that long one. And sleazer has got to put a little more air underneath. That ball should have been caught for a touchdown if he throws that ball long because Mullen was behind the defensive back. Penalty goes out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 drive. Mullen and Dixon out to the left and no motion. LaFrance on the right. Takes that little out pattern at the sideline in the Dallas territory. You know, LaFrance is one of the best receivers in the league. Police has gone to him for a touchdown tonight, but as I was telling you earlier, we talked to George and he expects every team in the league, like Tampa did last week, to try to take him out of the game. Well, 
definitely. Every team, when I, I got just a face, I try to take it out of the game. There's no doubt about it. Everyone's trying to stop me, and they're doing a real good job. However, we have a, some more receivers that can also do damage. Second down and a yard to go for a first down at the 21-yard line of Dallas, and timeout is called by Arch Fleischer. Didn't like what he saw in that circumstance. Things weren't quite right, so they'll take a break, and we'll take a break, too. 8.38 remaining first half from Reunion Arena. It's the drive, 14, and the Texans, 3. This is a brand-new $18,000 car. Put in a leading motor oil. This is an identical new car. Put in Mobile One. Start the bus and drive. Under extreme conditions, temperatures inside your engine can reach 570 degrees. Of course, Mobile One costs more. But then, under extreme conditions, look at what can happen to conventional motor oil. Mobile One. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? Again, second down and one for a first down at the 20-yard line. Tim Markham, Art Fleischer discussing what they'll do on this play. Oh, Hello, we're we'll wagering like commercial. Let's see if we can hear that. And go. What you heard was an and go. Which my feeling is the, it's a hitch and go. They're going to try to make the defense look for the outcut and then try to get behind him deep. LaFrance in motion. Pump fake for Gary Mullen and thrown behind him with a couple of penalty flags. Again, the coverage by Anthony Newsom, number three, and he can't cover Gary Mullen. Not now. You know, he can't stay with him, and Mullen is just taking him right to the cleaners, and they're going to Mullen because Mullen and the drive know that Newsom's having a problem. Let's listen to the referee get the call. Holding on the defense, three-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, run it. Left rip, left rip, left rip. 263, screen F. Okay, 263, screen F. This might be that little shovel pass play where it's a toss by Fleischer underhanded to the fullback. Seven penalties called on Dallas for 30 yards tonight certainly has hurt them and it puts the drive back with a first down there it is little shovel pass reddick turns back right into the tackle excellent defensive play by reggie davis now davis had reddick all the way and when he saw him run by the man he was supposed to block davis knew something was up so he got right to reddick you see watch the fullback he runs right by the man and turns that gives the play away here comes number four and he made sure Reddick wasn't going any further. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. 16-yard line of Dallas. Fleischer flipped it out of his hands. Penalty flag is down. Fumble looks to be recovered by Dallas. Fleischer is trying to say incomplete pass. Referees are not going to buy that. The ball slipped out of his hand. It is ruled a fumble. There is a penalty flag on the play, and Dallas will get the ball back. First down. And Arch Fleischer, unhappy about that circumstance as well he should be. He had receivers crisscrossing at the goal line, and the ball just squirted out of his hand. Recovered by Dallas. Now this is just, I don't think his hands are slippery. That ball just came out, and, and that's a fumble. He, his, his arm was not going forward when that ball came free, and that has to be a fumble. So 14-3, the Detroit Drive lead, but, you know, they should be ahead by more, you think, at this point. And Denard all over that ball. Recovers the fumble. It's first down Dallas at their own 20-yard line. They go to a shotgun. Jenkins overthrows Kenny, the intended receiver, coverage by Randall and the crowd wants a penalty call on Tate Randall. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, the guy that initiated the contact on that play was Atron Kenny. Randall was in great position, was going up for the ball. Kenny ran into him. 
Yeah. All right. The officials aren't hearing any of it. That's right. Second Rick. down and 10 for Dallas. Randall anticipated the pass was going to the ball, and Kenny knocked him down. And, of course, we're in Dallas, so they're going to be on the officials. But they're having any, have any contact. They're having a good time here tonight, though. They good just wish their too. team was in a better position. Down 11 at this point. Middle of the second quarter. Little completion. <laughs> Jeff Jenkins picked up maybe four or five on the play before smothered by Dixon and Randall. You hear a lot of Tate Randall last week against Tampa. Tate set a team record with 12 tackles. Now part of the reason was is that the defense was on the field an awful lot. But, uh, you know, you don't get that many tackles in one game in this league, usually. And Tate Randall had 12 of them last week. He'll be around the football. That's why he's a defensive specialist for this club. Third down, a long five. You could call it six. All the receivers stacked on the near side. Jenkins over the middle and right out of the hands of the intended receiver. Almost got a secondary catch out of that as the bounce came near Jeff Jenkins. But it just bounced off the hands of Atron Kenny. Incomplete fourth down. There's a pass that should have been caught. See Kenny right in the middle. Ball hits him right in the hands through his hands and the helmet. And then down. Jenkins almost tried to come back and make the catch, but that, that's the ball that Atron Kinney should have caught. I wonder if he heard footsteps, as we are prone to say, because the tackler was there and put a helmet in his ribs. But Jim Power will try one now. A lengthy effort. Let's listen. 61! 61! 
when he calls an 80 series, anything with an 80 in it, 85, 84, 87, that's a three-step quick pass drop by Fleischer. Now, the 61 is a little different. We don't know what that is. Tim might have that new one up his sleeve and added it to this game. Second down, a long three. Going deep, complete to LaFrance. And a penalty flag has been thrown. LaFrance caught it at the Texan 15-yard line, and he and Alex Morris are having words. Dallas is saying there's a hold, and the official is bringing the ball back. It is a hold against the drive. They threw the flag in the vicinity of Billy Harris. Now, you know, I don't know. I don't, Billy, wait, George LaFrance almost over the boards and into the pit. He didn't like that very much by Morris, but the call was made on Billy Harris, the drive nose guard or center, and the he threw the flag on him, and the guy was like eight yards from Fleischer. He was way away from the play. Billy wasn't holding him. He was just standing in front of him. He got a, an assist from Harvey Martin, Jim, on the sideline there. They kept LaFrance from going over. Right. But it is third down and seven now as Fleischer tries to find Mullen again, hits him in the hands. Penalty flag is down. Anthony Newsom probably interfered with Mullen. Now, Mullen's got Anthony Newsom completely turned around, and he doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Back to Tim Markham on the sideline. From side the stationary, line. just go left. So we're going to left pass. Okay, let's listen. No, 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 no. All oh, okay. right now. Yeah, George. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, good, good, good call. Teresa calling that one. North penalty, automatic first Drew down. Drew Pearson wanting to argue that situation, loses the argument. The penalty's interference, eight yards, a first down. Would have been a first down anyway for the drive. See, now they made that call, and Arch Fleischer said, we're on the left pass. They've moved the ball back over to the right hash. So Sleacher's come back over, talk to Markham, and they're going with a different play. Probably going to roll Sleacher to the wide side of the field or throw that direction. At the 23-yard line, first down. Plenty of time going to Austin. Out the back of the end zone, intended for LaFran. No real coverage there. Penalty flag is down. Two penalty flags are down. One back in the area of Sleacher, who may have been hit after the throw. Well, Arnold That's Campbell. personal foul. Rough in the quarterback. We got unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense. That was on number 75, Arnold Campbell. Because he came back and somebody just threw a beer on the field. And Jeff Jenkins is egging him on. And, and that's not good. Jeff might be thirsty, Jim. <laughs> I don't think the league allows them to have a cold beer at halftime, do they? Before, <laughs> before halftime with a minute left. There is the empty beer can, and uh, that customer wasted about two and a half dollars, if I'm not correct, at the, at the concession stand on that beer. But Campbell got the call, unsportsmanlike conduct, and roughing Fleischer. Automatic first down, big play for the Detroit Drive. Down on the sideline, Markham talking with Arch Fleischer. Now over here, we don't need to show The official handed all the way down near the five-yard line. How long is this penalty going to be? The Texans arguing the point right now. I see. That's why I think Markham's waiting to talk to Fleischer about the play until they figure out where the ball's going to be. If they're tacked on top of each other, the longest penalty they give in this league is eight yards. If you tack two eight-yarders okay, on. Well, that penalty is worth plenty of yards. The bad news is, with all the penalties and the first down dominance you saw a moment ago, the drive has just an eight-point lead, 14-6. Late in the first half at Dallas Reunion Arena, LaFrance in motion. Up the middle, Fleischer will score easily. A little bitty block from Dixon, but he didn't need it. There was a great opening as Fleischer kind of ad-libbed that. And... Uh, his ankle's not too good. Looks like he's limping a little bit, but you score six, you feel pretty good. Yeah, he feels pretty good. I think he had to make the cut. Watch. He's reading outside. He sees where the defense is going, and he cuts back inside Jeff Atkins. 
and that was the key read on that play. He rolled to the right, saw the defense outside. Now he knows he's got to cut back because he's not going to beat him to the corner. Once he got behind Atkins, the inside backer, he was able to make the cut to the end zone. On the replay, you could see Atkins overcommit, kind of jump-stepping, trying to get the, the leap on Alvin Reddick, who he expected to be carrying the ball, and all of a sudden, it was going back the other way in the hands of Art Glacier. One of the primary cardinal sins of football is for a linebacker you don't want to overrun the football and that's what Atkins did is he got a Dallas Texan down on the field injury. Can't see a number at this point. 88 Sam Moore. Well it couldn't have been from the block by Dixon. It no. wasn't much of a block but it was effective in that he screened the player away from Sleeper at the goal line. Now when he went down he might have looked like they're looking at his wrist maybe. Hard to tell from this point, but Sam Moore is a big-time player for them. They can't afford to lose him. 20 to 6 at this point, pending the extra point attempt from Novo Boyovic, who has not been successful tonight. One block, one just wide right. Big-time receiver indeed. And you know, he's a big guy. 6'4, 215 in this league is a darn big receiver. And Sam Moore is the kind of guy, like you saw him make the catch earlier against David Evans. You know, Evans has given away probably five inches and uh, 20, 25 pounds to Sam Moore. And he's the kind of guy who can only be, you know, he can, he can be a possession receiver, run underneath, catch the ball in traffic, but he can also go deep. And if they lose him, Dallas has got problems because he's one of their big guys that they like to go to in the crunch time. Well, the other problem that Dallas has is penalties tonight. 54 yards in penalties in the first half, 24 yards in this drive alone that resulted in six points for Detroit. Yeah, and, and Arnold Campbell, who used to be with the Detroit drive, and they did not protect him, and he was taken away from the drive, but the drive didn't necessarily need him. Went to Orlando, then came down to here to, to Dallas. And I think he wanted to have a great game, and he's seen it get away from him, and I think he just lost his cool and cost his team big yards. Witkowski on the hold for Boyovic. Low snap. Kick is up. And good. Boyovic connects on one, and that makes it Detroit 21 and Dallas 6 with one minute left in the first half. Boyovich getting the extra point. Novo's had his problems of late. Uh, we told you in the open that he might be a little bit on the bubble. Uh, he didn't have a good game last week against Tampa. Let's take a look at the scoring drive. The drive goes four plays, 33 yards. But remember, 24 of those 33 yards were taken up by penalty. 311 time of possession. Fleischer takes the final seven yards on a little quarterback option run that that Atkins, the linebacker for Dallas, overran the play, and he cut it behind him, got a block by Dixon, got in the end zone. But Boyovic, the guy we were talking about, Larry, you know, I think the big thing that Tim Markham was upset with last week against him is his kickoff. He, he put the drive in trouble defensively by not kicking the ball down the field into the net or out of the end zone, and Tampa was starting from the 20, and you can't give up that field position in this small field. Anthony Newsom is deep for the Texans. Number three to receive the kick of number three from Detroit, Boyovic. He got a beauty that time. Drops it right between the net, out of bounds, and excellent. No return possible on that one. And that's what the, the drunk coaches want to see out of Boyovic. Get the ball down off the net or underneath the crossbar, beyond the end line. Take a look at the total offense, 21-6 Detroit. And you can see by the yard, that indicates what's happening. And 37 of the Dallas offense came in one pass play. That wobbly completion down the sideline. So it's been drive dominance, but they don't have a giant lead here as it's first down Dallas. Jenkins fumbles the snap, but gets it complete to Kenny. That's a nine-yard line. Make it to 10. Rock Richmond on the tackle. Hey, there's a little Caesar. Pizza, pizza. Yeah, he says. <laughs> on second down, Jenkins hung on a long time. Threw it away, incomplete. Jenkins saying that he was knocked down by Evans. The official disagreeing. Now, Evans is the best defender. They like to put Evans 
on the best wide receiver for the other team. He had Jenkins covered well. The other thing, the brother Albert Jenkins got drilled and sandwiched between Flint Thumbing and John Corker. I mean, you don't think it's tough in this league? That's Alfred Jenkins, what a meeting of the minds between Flint Fleming and John Corker are, and you're the man they're asking. Third down and five, the Texans 0-3 on third down tonight with 36.7 seconds remaining in the first half. Jenkins over the middle, two receivers, and he overthrew them both. Gerald Bradley jumped for the ball, couldn't get it. Jeff Jenkins was also there, and he was uh, not as close as Bradley was. Uh, again, you see Jenkins having a problem delivering the football after he gets drilled by Corker and Fleming. I mean, you know, he may be getting a little bit bucky. And you said it in the open. He's an option quarterback, not used to throwing almost every down. He's used to running. And taking a shot when you're throwing the football and exposed is a lot different than taking a shot when you're running the football and able to brace yourself. 56 yards on this attempt from the two-yard line by Power. He nailed a 41-yarder earlier, and this one's got the distance, but it's offline. And out of play. 26 seconds remain in the half, and the drive will have that much time to see if they can put some more points up. They lead 21-6 here at the Dallas Reunion Arena. Trying to bounce back from a loss to Tampa Bay on Monday night that drops the drive record to 5-1. and one. Still in first place, but tied with Tampa going into tonight's action. Certainly playing a lot better, and I think with great intensity in this game than they did last week against Tampa Bay and Joe Louis Arena. Uh, you can just see it. You get the feel that this is uh, a team that gets a little bit more together, more cohesive offensively, particularly with Fleischer throwing the quicker passes, not going deep as much as they tried against Tampa. Parker raising his hand to indicate he is a receiver. Fleischer going for it all to Mullen. And he threw it out of bounds off the field of play. Mullen that time covered by Jeff Jenkins. Took six seconds, just over six seconds, so they'll get a second down and ten from the five. Tried to go the distance that time on a fly route to Gary Mullen, and Jeff Jenkins is going to have none of it. Tim Markham football. Go get it. Throw it deep and let him run under it. I bet you see something a little bit shorter, a little bit towards the sideline, because they can stop the clock now getting out of bounds. Dixon, high motion. Placer again going for Mullen. He got him. Even though it was held, Mullen makes the catch at the five-yard line of Dallas. 13 and a half seconds left in the half. Shows you how much I know. I thought they'd go to the out a little bit safer route. But the key to this, see Placer look left just there? That kept... Anthony Newsom out of the middle of the field and it left Jenkins one-on-one -on -one with Mullen as Detroit calls a timeout now Tim Markham waits for we got another Leeson. timeout and I think what we can do we got a show we can either run one call timeout and throw two in the, in the end zone okay or we can throw, throw one and then run one well we got you know what though let's go Let's go right or left. I tell you, you don't want to score. You want to score. You want to score. Get the lane on the outside. Now, they got that. They got that done. Here's what will score right here. All three's got it done. No way else. Yeah. Here's what. Here's what will score. We're we're just go, go right, right. Two-sided bingo. Sixty bingo. Well, that's the what will score according to Tim Markham. Sixty bingo. Sixty bingo. Well, that's what will score according to Tim Markham. The sixty bingo. Now the bingo play is where the wide receiver will run a deep pass. He'll run one of the receiver or the cornerback into the end zone deep. The other inside receiver slot back or wing if you want to call it will run the quick out cut and they'll try to hit the underneath receiver quickly on the out cut right at the goal line. This will be a fairly quick pass. Well it better be. 13 and a half seconds remain. Rolling Fleischer over the middle for LaFrance. Well covered. Jenkins delivered a block on him, but there was other coverage all around LaFrance, including Smiley Elmore. The guy they wanted to go to was Dwayne Dixon. Couldn't get it to him. He was being held and covered well by Dallas. So Swissa had to come off to a second receiver. Watch Dixon. He's being held over here to the right just by the goal line. Swissa had to come off, try to throw it to LaFrance. Really got it between him and Mullen. So 
Crouch try again from the five yard line with 8.9 seconds left in the half. Second down, doesn't matter much from the five. It's the clock that matters. Glacier rolling around. Knocked down. Almost intercepted by Alex Morris. Chose not to catch that one. And with 3.3 left, Boyovic heads onto the field to try for a field goal. Now, you got to give Dallas a lot of credit for the coverage they had. Both instances, Detroit tried to run them a couple of trick plays. One, get Dixon free underneath. This time, Fleister had plenty of time. The rush was not a factor. Tried to throw across his body to Dixon. They had that covered. And really, Alec Morris should have had the interception. He just drops the ball, so the drive now will try to go for three with Novo Boyovic. 20-yard field goal attempt on the left hash mark. Got to get into that nine-foot section between the screens. It is a precise kick. Wachowski sets it down. Boyovic hits it. Penalty flag, however, has been thrown. Time ran out. And there's a little pushing and shoving going on between Jeff Hurd, 65, of Dallas, and Dixon, and Fleming. And they're checking with Boyovic. No time. Take the field goal if that's what they'll give you. We got an illegal defense. Penalty decline. Field goal good. Halftime. That says it all. At the half, it's the drive now 24 and the Dallas Texans 6. Well, we've got Tim Markham standing by uh, down on the sideline, and he probably was glad that call was made. He should refuse it, but he told the referee earlier about rushing from the outside. How about that? Yeah, Tim... Tim's on the headset uh, right now. Tim, they finally did call it. Yeah. They, the guy did rush from the outside. The thing you told them about earlier, and they called it. Well, you know, that, and that's, hopefully they'll call it again when they do that. <laughs> but uh, the thing we've got to do is just we got to continue to do our deal offensively. Defense has got a good pass rush, and that's, all, that's the key so far. Well, you scared Jenkins a couple times. Even though he's gotten the pass off, Corker and Fleming drilled him, and he's not the same quarterback after well, he takes the hit. You know, you, you uh, I don't know if you ever played that. No, you didn't. You played with your hand in the dirt, didn't you? <laughs> but uh, you hit him a couple of times, even after uh, the throw, and, uh, you know, those throws are not quite as accurate. You've run the clock pretty well, Coach, but do you wish you had a few more points after all that time of possession? You know, we've uh, really messed away at two opportunities, uh, down driving here and throwing on the screen. Arch ball camp, you know, came out of our hand. But, hey, you know, we, what we've got to do is we're 24 to 6 and just continue the pressure the way we, uh, we've we been doing the first half. Thanks very much, Coach. Go ahead and do it. Thanks. Tim Markham at halftime. It's the Detroit Drive 24, the Dallas Texans 6. And at the top of the telecast, some of the things we talked about that the drive had to do have come true. They possess the ball. Art Fleischer having a much better game than he had Monday night in the loss against Tampa. And Novo Boyovic's kicking problems may be solved as he's nailed an extra point and a field goal to give the drive the lead they enjoy right now. Well, the leading receiver, the leading scorer in the league is a member of the Detroit Drive, George LaFrance. And he is down at the sideline right now with Jim Brandstetter. Thanks very much, Larry. And of course, we're with a leading receiver in arena football right now, George LaFrance of Detroit Drive. George, you're having a great year. Uh, more than you expected, or did you expect this kind of year? I expected just to have a good time, show the people in the audience, and let the NFL team know that I could play ball. That's basically the simple thing. You seem to take the arena game and turn it into a new art form in the sense that your speed, you're able to make big plays happen. Talk to me why you can do that in this small field, and you haven't had the chance in the big game yet. I really couldn't answer that question. I'm trying to figure it out now. I've been waiting and waiting for opportunity to play ball, and quite naturally, Arena Football gave me the opportunity to showcase my talent, and I'm trying to do the best of my ability. What do you think has been the secret for your success so far this year for the drive, and the fact that you're leading the league in receiving? Our team. Um, no doubt about it. My team blocking, our offense receives, our quarterback throwing ball, defense stopping. It's a whole team effort. That's my success. Also tonight in Dallas, you're having an opportunity to have the family here. Your wife Darlene is here. Darlene, come on in. Uh, you're full-blooded Navajo Indian. You live in Arizona. It must be tough staying away from George, the leading receiver in the league, for as much time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's always been difficult, but we manage. And you've got a nine-month-old baby. Mm-hmm. She just turned nine months yesterday. Oh, you know, is that right? Mm-hmm. 
And is this, uh, what, how many times have you seen George play this year? And live? Yeah. Twice. Twice. This is the second one. This is the second time. Do you hope he gets that call from an NFL team or a Canadian team? I think it's awesome. <laughs> What's it going to take, George? It's going to take him to give us a phone call. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> give me the opportunity. That's all I need. In the meantime, George LaFrance has got to worry about the Dallas Sexton. Okay. <laughs> Don't go away. The second half is coming up after we do statistics and first half highlights that we plus for these words. An arena in Dallas. While they have a little uh, punt competition among the fans on the field behind us, that will explain the cheering if you hear some, because there's not much to cheer about if you're a Dallas Texan fan tonight. Well, I think the biggest thing, Larry, you talk about low scoring, time of possession is unbelievable. The drive has really controlled the football game offensively and defensively they haven't given Dallas anything to really do and offensively they've been explosive. One play for Dallas that amounts to most of their offense at 37 yards pass reception. Meanwhile, the scoring as far as the drive is concerned, a nifty run by Reddick early in the game where he finished off the last yard or so all by himself. Yeah, he did and the drive knew that they had something going to the left when they made the play. Here it is. This is the first score. A little pitch play. Got a good block on 82 Co-Star. And then Reddick cuts inside the block and then just dives into the end zone. And that was the first drive score of the game. And that got him off to a good start. It was in their first possession. They controlled the ball for better than seven minutes. Then on defense, Troy Knight does the job. Just beats the block at the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle on the fullback to the safety. That made up for a couple of extra points that were missed. One blocked and one missed by Boyovich in the early going. The drive came back. Schleister and LaFrance. This one just a breakdown in the Texans' backfield. Schleister had time to throw, and LaFrance was so wide open it was kind of scary. Nobody was in 10 yards of him. He just made the easy catch. Schleister laid it out for him to get it, and at that point, the drive was in big, big control. You can call this next one another breakdown as Schleister started one way, cut back the other way, found an opening in the Texan defense and ran seven yards for a touchdown. Although, as he went to spike it, you can see that ankle got a little gimpy. Well, Atkins, number 33, the linebacker for Dallas, overran the play, and the Cardinal sends a linebacker when you've got a quarterback. You want to use the sideline as your friend, and he overran the play. Statistically, you can see the dominance of the drive. And there might ought to be more points up there for the drive, as a matter of fact, instead of just 24. But as Tim Markham said at halftime, they missed a couple of opportunities. Still, they are controlling this game. They're in good shape, marching toward perhaps their sixth victory over the season. So you look at that stat, and I think it's amazing that uh, Dallas only has minus three yards rushing. Uh, just 49 passing and 37 came on one play. The two turnovers by Detroit have cost them. They should be ahead by more. Two turnovers hurt, but the drive in control, and, and when you're in this position, even though you may not have the lead you want to have, the thing that's most important and I'm sure is maybe most encouraging to Tim Markham is the fact that his defense is playing so well. When your defense is playing that well and shutting the other guy down, offensively you can afford to sputter a bit. And that's what's happening halftime at Dallas Reunion Arena. It's the drive trying to get back on the winning track, leading 24 to 6. We'll be back with a second half kickoff in just a moment. Look now, but the ice is gone and the water is heating up. Anderson Sales and Service has just what you need to make it a wet and wild summer with the full line of Kawasaki jet skis and watercraft. Right now at Anderson, get two with a double trailer for as little as $175 a month. And if you buy now, you'll get $100 worth of free accessories. Kawasaki, get the good times wet. Anderson Sales and Service, your personal watercraft superstore. Telegraph Road in Bloomfield Hill. The best deals are at... Anderson. Subway Cold Cut Combo. It starts with the foundation of the freshest bread anywhere. Baked every four hours in every Subway store. Then cheese, three kinds of meat, and whichever of our nine tasty fixings you choose. Total construction costs a buck sixty-nine. It's time to eat. Subway six-inch cold cut combo. For a buck sixty-nine, we can build one for you. Delco Park can significantly reduce 
premature wrinkles. AC Delco. It's like buying time. What's Metro Max up to now? He's out to hammer the competition again. And why not? It's time for the big Metro 25 warehouse clearance sale. Max, don't you ever take it easy on the other guys? No way. I'm fighting them tooth and nail. Every brand on sale up to 70% off. Euro Oil Tiger Paws as low as $9.95. Lowest prices guaranteed. So come to Metro 25, home of the white glove treatment, where service and savings go hand in hand. Boom. Check Sunday's Detroit News or the Yellow Pages for the dealer nearest you. Well, it's been a record-setting night for the Dallas Texans, but not one you want to have in the, in the record column. Eleven penalties in the first half. That's a Dallas Texan club record. The other key is Detroit gets seven first downs by penalty in that half. And, uh, boy, when, when you give a team that many first downs in, on a short field like this, you just got to be in trouble. And Dallas finds himself down 24-6 because of it. In a 10-game season, it's been all roses in the first half for the Detroit Drive as they swept to five straight victories. Putting that against the five victories that ended last year, they had that 10-game winning streak just broken by Tampa Bay last Monday night at Joe Louis Arena. Other they, than that, they controlled games, although they won a couple of close ones in Albany and Orlando. Yeah, they had a, those were a couple of squeakers, both of them on the road. Albany, they went 43-42 in overtime, and... At Orlando, Novo Vojovic is a 46-yard field goal to win it in overtime, 43-40. So the drive is really, I don't think, played as well as Tim Markham would like them to play or has not played up to their potential. And slowly rounding them into shape by thinking, you know, you get into a playoff situation, you want to peak at playoff time. And I think that's where Tim Markham is headed with this club. Three games remain after this one on the drive schedule. They're at Columbus. That is their next game. And it'll be uh, on pass. Then it's Dallas coming to Detroit. So there's a rematch between these two teams, and that ought to be interesting when they come to Joe Louis Arena. And finally, Denver at Detroit. And these are teams from the lower half of the league, so the schedule should favor the drive in terms of going back to the Arena Bowl and in, in good position. <laughs> Tim Markham working the officials again. That's not, that's not legal. On a top, up there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> They're trying to change the rules. Only college takedowns in this league, 2-4. Only takedowns in this league. We've said that forever. You know that. Huh? Go, go, do your scope. You want to know about working the official? Just right on example. Just working the official. We might also talk to you about a couple of... As we take a look at some uh, maintenance being done by the carpeting crew here at Reunion Arena in Dallas. There's a seam right on the back of the end zone right. there, and apparently that had split some and was giving, so they have uh, butted it back together. And it's concrete underneath that seam, so players didn't want to get that seam exposed. Real quickly, out of town, big score regarding the Detroit drive in the fourth quarter. Denver leads Tampa 13-10. If Denver can hold on and win that game and the drive hold on and win this one, the drive will be in first place in the league all by their lonesome. And at halftime, New Orleans bombing Columbus 28-3. Columbus under Dave Winham having lots of difficulties getting in the win column this year. So everything going right for the drive tonight. Leading 24-6 here at the half in Dallas and having good things happen to them as far as Tampa Bay is concerned. It'll be Novo Boyovic kicking off for the drive and kicking deep to Anthony Newsom, number three, as the second half gets yeah, underway. Yeah, ready for the second half? That is once the fans give their approval. Are you ready for the second half, he says, and they say yes. A line drive kick that kicks off the hands of Newsom and out of bounds. That'll put it on the five, first down for the Texans. There's a good kick by Novo Boyovic again. If you can't get it into the net, you want to make sure that the ball doesn't go down end over end. It's easy to catch that way. That one knuckled on its way to Newsom, and it, it, 
it kind of sailed on him and he wasn't able to make the catch solid. Big John Corker leading the defensive rush that has been solid for this game so far against Dallas. See what the Texans dreamed up at halftime. First and 10 for Alfred Jenkins from his own five yard line. A little lob down the sideline and complete. Sam Moore makes the catch. Tate Randall makes the tackle secure, but a big gainer for Dallas. A Sam Moore who went out of the game in the first half was hurt has come back and once again makes the great catch down the sideline. Jenkins just lays it up for him. He had David Evans beat, and Evans, again, not bad coverage. As soon as the ball arrives, he tries to strip the arm down of Big Sam Moore, but at 6'4", 215, he's got the strength to hold on and with one hand control the ball and make that catch. Big, big play. A 40-yard gain from the five to the five, and it's first down. For the Texans now at the Detroit five. A little action and just back to the five is as far as Jenkins can go. He had Dixon wrapped around his ankles. He had Reddick and Rope wrapped around him a little higher. Now John Corker is another guy that the drive has to get going defensively. He's their key guy and John Corker will tell you sometimes he expects too much of himself in situations like this. I've always felt that I never could play good enough, so I'm, I'm just looking for a good ball game tonight uh, and create a lot of good pressure on the quarterback, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make some big plays happen. Second down and five. Snap is loose, covered by the drive, but a penalty flag is down, and it looked like Corker got across that line before the snap. And Corker, again, trying to make something happen, trying to get pressure upfield on the quarterback. Let's take a look. And what goes on is you see Corker gets the step and then the offensive guy came out of his stance. You know, they might try to call it. No, it is on Detroit. So Corker will get the call. And I, I, don't, I don't think it's one of those situations he's just, you know, that's an aggressive mistake. Coaches will take that on occasion. I don't think it's the goal line, though, is the time to make it. They will repeat second down, but now from the three-yard line. You just gave him a two-yard penalty, Jim? Yeah, sometimes the penalties in this league don't actually work the way they're supposed to. Sometimes inside the five, they'll give half the distance. And so it turns into a, a two-yard penalty instead of a three-yard penalty. Got 9,875 in attendance here in Dallas tonight. That's a nice crowd for Dallas. Uh, we talked to some people before the game. They're talking maybe four or five thousand would be here. Everybody else is in the pool. <laughs> now there they they re they re uh, remarked that penalty and it is half the distance and it goes two and a half yards. Now Drew Pearson discusses options with his option quarterback. Well, on the goal line in this league in the eight man game. The option is an effective play, and don't be surprised if they try to use it. Second down, two and a half, actually. Jenkins to his fullback, knocked down at the one-yard line. Dixon made the first contact, but the real tackle was made by Corker, saving the touchdown because Mitchell Ward had a little opening, a little daylight, and it closed quickly. Third down and goal now for the drive defense, and this is where they broke down last week against Tampa. They allowed Tampa to score on third down plays, and this is a key play in this game. If, if Texas can get in in their first possession here in the second half, you know, they get themselves back in the ball game mentally. So difficult to stop a run from the one with only eight men. On the side, Jenkins looking to throw. A hole run on the option. Dixon knocked him down at the one-yard line. Good react by Dwayne Dixon. Now there's a, there's a bit of a surprise. If you don't expect Dixon, who for the most part the wide receiver, was in college at Florida, to be able to bring down an option quarterback in the open field. But this shows you what kind of player Dwayne Dixon is. The play designed to go left. Nothing's there. The option quarterback sees some opening and watch Dixon react up get his head across in front, make a good solid hit, and knock down the quarterback, get his knee down a yard short of the end zone, 
in on fourth and goal, trailing 24-6. The Dallas Texans are going to go for it. I think Drew Pearson heard the crowd. They yelled, go for it, go for it. And the drive was in a position in a formation that Jenkins did not like. So he calls timeout. Early third quarter, the Dallas Texans are threatening at the drive one yard line. When we come back, it's the drive 24, the Texans six. to Jenkins not liking the formation of the drive, there's another possibility. There were only two seconds remaining on the play clock when he called his timeout. 30 seconds to get the ball in play. Fourth down and one at the Detroit one. That's the circumstance for the Dallas Texans as they look to get their first touchdown of the night. And Jenkins is really given a play it took him about 30 seconds to tell everybody in the huddle what the play was. And he rolling left, looking for an option. Back the other way, got him wide open. Jeff Jenkins slipped out, uncovered, away from the flow of the play, and it cut down Dallas. That play was designed, I think, especially for this game. Takes account of the heavy flow to the ball of the Detroit Drive defense. The option quarterback has the feet and the speed to get way out. Now, Jenkins gets in the middle of the field and then just slides. Now, throwing the ball going backwards shows what kind of an athlete Jenkins is. Because he threw that ball off his back foot, going away from his receiver, and got it there for the six. Jim Power for the extra point. It's good. 10.24 left, third quarter, as Dallas scores on its first possession. And it's now the drive, 24, and the Texans, 13. This game can turn around that quickly. In arena football, no lead is safe at any time, almost. The length of time it took Jenkins to call that play may be because, as he told me before the game, the technology that Drew Pearson brought with him the description of plays is maybe a little more complex than the rest of the Arena Football League. Well, he came no doubt from the Dallas Cowboys. You're right, he came from the Tom Landry Dallas Cowboys, and, and that was a pretty intricate offense. And They, they called Landry an innovator, and, and certainly Drew Pearson's going to bring some of that experience to the Arena Football game. And that's why I think he utilized the talents of his quarterback really well. Knew he had the speed to get outside. They rolled two corkers, which was brave. Because Berker's the good pass rusher, and yet got away with it, and let Jeff Jenkins slip back away from the flow of the ball, get into the open, and then the athletic ability of Jenkins to throw it across his body, going away from the receiver and getting it done, shows something. LaFrance is deep, tries to get that one off the screen. He does. Trouble at the one-yard line, and whistles blow. I guess they figured he didn't get that catch, and they're calling it out. They're saying he stepped out of bounds at the end line, which will be a touchback, and the drive will start from their own five-yard line. That's a break for the drive because he wasn't going to make the five-yard line. He was going to get stopped at the three or the four, I think. Well, let's we'll take a look at it and see if LaFrance indeed steps out of bounds. We're right on the end line. Great camera work. He goes up, knocks it down. Now, when does he have possession? Right now, and he has a foot in the end line. So, yeah. He is out of bounds. Little completion in the right flat to Dixon from Fleischer and a gain of almost nine yards on the play. A short pass, a little timing route, and that works to get it away from the drive goal line. There you see the Texans scoring drive. A big pass play to Sam Moore setting that one up. He gains 40 of the 45. Critical possession here too for the Detroit drive. 
Dallas just scored. The crowd back into the game. Detroit's got to make something happen. Only an 11-point difference despite the domination by the drive. Long pass, incomplete, intended for LaFrance. Penalty flags everywhere as Jenkins rolled right over it. Jeff Jenkins in this instance. Now the crowd is booing on this call, but there's clearly contact before the ball gets there. Watch. Right over the top, well before the ball gets there, Jenkins had the back of LaFrance's head and was pulling it back. Well, he's pulling his helmet back out of the way there, Jim. I don't know that you could call that anything. Well, as much noise as the fans here in Reunion Arena have made, if that call was not made, Tim Markham would have made about as much noise as the 9,000 people on hand. That'll be... I'm, I'm waiting for the automatic first down. Just replay it. Second down and one. Offsetting penalty. Dixon in motion. Reddick fumbles the pitch. Gets knocked away from the ball, and the Texans say they have it. No, the referee rules Detroit still has the ball. Ball went out of bounds. Loss of about a half a yard. This is just Alvin Reddick taking his eyes off the ball. It was a good pitch. Now this ball is not in possession of anyone and it hits the end line or the out of bounds line. George LaFrance was over there. No possession. So the ball stays in Detroit's hands. Come on. Second down and three. LaFrance, high motion to the right. Pitch again to Reddick, and penalty flags are everywhere as that play doesn't get started. I think we had an offside call against Dallas. The nose guard bumped John Ralph the center before the snap. Get called, illegal procedure, on the defense, three yard penalty, first down. That'll be a first down by penalty as the penalties continue for the Texans, and the drive gets the benefit there, but they still got to move this ball. Good concentration by that offensive line, though, to hold it. They, they went on a low snap count, or a long snap count. Maybe they went on two instead of one, and that offensive line stayed still. But the defense jumped off, and it got him a first down. First and 10 at the drive, 16. Their eighth first down by penalty. Fleischer going for it. Overthrows Mullen, who was pushed by Jeff Jenkins, indicated by that flag that was thrown deep in the Dallas defensive backfield. I think we're going to have another holding call on the defense. Obviously, the crowd doesn't agree with that, but this is the Dallas crowd. And all night long, the Texan defenders have been Kennedy. holding drive receivers, particularly Mullen, who they don't seem to be able to stay up with. Let's go down to Tim Markham talking to Arch Fleischer. Can you, can you beat uh, Sam on a R nose? Let's go for it. Go for it. What do you think Corker's going to say? Yeah. He wants Corker to get out in the pass pattern. Now, John Corker normally plays up in that offensive line, and he pass blocks. What they're doing here is they're going to put Corker against Sam Moore, who is a wide receiver, but he's playing in that linebacker position. They're going to fake a run away from Corker, and then Corker's going to release out and try to get deep, and they're going to try to throw the ball to him. But there is Sam Moore. Timeout has been called by the official on his own because Gary Kostar was pleading the case defensively for the Texans, and the officials wanted to listen to that plea. Now, first down and 10 for the drive at the Dallas 23. LaFrance, high motion right. There he goes. Corker turned inside. Fleischer threw it outside. Incomplete. And he was sacked pretty hard. Kostar, the man who was pleading the Dallas case, has decided to do it another way. Physically. Well, the play never worked because Sam Moore never bit on the run fake. Never got out of there. As soon as Corker released, Sam Moore was on him. And Fleischer really had no other choice but to throw the ball away. But when you ask the lineman if he wants to be a pass receiver, you've got to get let's go for it every time. 
Second down and 10. Fleischer in trouble. Over the middle. Almost intercepted by Alex Morris. He couldn't control it at about the two-yard line. Down in the end zone, the intended receiver, LaFran. If the protection does not break down, this is a touchdown. Watch Fleischer. He's just running around trying to buy time. He sees LaFrance open, but he doesn't have time to set his feet and really get anything on the ball. He tries his best, but look, LaFrance is back in the end zone, seven yards behind. Alex Morris, if the ball gets thrown there, it's a drive touchdown. But you're seeing an inspired Texas defensive line coming hard after Schleister. Third down and 10, still at the Dallas 23. Dixon high motion. Better protection. Dixon got it and got the first down. Boy. Being held by Alex Morris, but he had the first down on the spin and then dove ahead to the 11-yard line. When you need the big play, you go to Dwayne Dixon. And Fleischer gets great protection. Little hook pattern in front of Alex Morris. He drove him deep. Morris had to respect him for getting into the end zone, so he gave him some cushion. And he stopped on a dime, turned back, looked at Fleischer, made the big catch for the first down. Pretty good night for Dwayne Dixon. On first down, LaFrance goes in motion right. Plenty of time. Thrown behind Mullen. No good. He was being battled by Anthony Newsom, who's had his problems tonight, but that time Newsom stayed with it. Got a hand on the ball. Now they're playing Mullen with a tight cover, man, right on his face. He's having trouble with Newsom getting off the line of scrimmage. Newsom in front there, got a hand on the ball. Mullen tried to make the catch against the board, couldn't get it done. Almost. Second down and 10 from the Dallas 11. Once again, a long possession time for this drive. And that's good, particularly if Detroit can score. Reddick on the pitch, being hounded and knocked out of bounds, no game. Gary Kostar playing inspired football, wrapped him up. They are defensively very excited about this ball club right now. And the drive has got to, again, you know, get over that and try to quiet the crowd. The other guy that's really having an effect is Mitchell Ward, number 44. That inside backer, he's playing very hard and tough against the run. The little man from Southwest Texas State. Third down and 10. They lost about a half a yard. We'll still call it the 11. LaFrance, the motion man. Plenty of time. Over the middle. Mullen touchdown. And a penalty flag is down. Back at the line of scrimmage. A hold against the drive. Well, that turns this crowd up a notch, doesn't it? All of a sudden, the flag goes against Detroit and at the most inopportune time for the drive. I think Ted Hennings, and he just looked at Tim Markham and said, okay, okay. But a Holden, beautiful throw by Fleischer to a Mullen breaking Lock right to the post, down the and he ball. hit him at the goal line. And here's that situation. You see the pass underneath. Mullen turned Jenkins right around, got into the end zone. Let's go down to Tim Markham on the sideline. Well, he's, he's resigned himself to the fact that the call is made, and the holding call is a loss of down. When that happens on third down, you can't make it up. And that is the problem. So they'll have to try the field goal. 32-yard attempt from Novo Boyova. Nailed one in the first half. Could use another one. Soak of the drive. Nope. Wide left. No good. So with 3.24 left third quarter from Dallas, it's the drive 24, the Texans 13. To this week. And I'll tell you, one of the things that's a problem for, you know, in arena football, you got to go both ways. You know, when the offense has the ball a long time, you're not giving the defense that much of a rest. Dwayne Dixon said last week against Tampa, his playing time cost him because he just couldn't play that many snaps. 
Well, each game, I try to approach each game to where I'm performing at 110%. Uh, last game, I played a lot of plays. I played about 115 snaps of the ball, and uh, I was quite a bit of plays. I want to get a little bit of break in there sometime and then be able to be a little bit more effective on the field. I, I didn't feel like I was able to give uh, as much, you know, being that I played so many snaps. So I think uh, we'll get a better substitution uh, rotation in there this time. On second down and three, Jenkins went for it all, trying to hit Sam Moore, but the coverage was excellent. David Evans had inside position. Moore thought he was pushed a little bit, but if there was a push at all, it was the other way. And Evans just let that ball drop incomplete. Third well, down and three. And as we were listening to Dixon, one thing to remember is 142 left in the third quarter. He has not been out of the game yet. He started, and he has stayed in there both offensively and defensively. A little motion from Kenny, but not much. Looking for Kenny. Got the first down. Knocked out of bounds almost immediately by Rock Richmond. But the Texans have moved it out to their own 18-yard line. First down. And the injured player down for the drive. Flint Fleming. Working on it looks like his left elbow or it's his right right elbow or right shoulder. And we'll uh, come back in a moment or two to see just how Flint Fleming is. 116 left third quarter. It remains Detroit 24, Dallas 13. Look now, but the ice is gone and the water is heating up. Anderson Sales and Service has just what you need to make it a wet and wild summer with the full line of Kawasaki jet skis and watercraft. Right now at Anderson, get two with a double trailer for as little as $175 a month. And if you buy now, you'll get $100 worth of free accessories. Kawasaki, get the good times wet. Anderson Sales and Service, your personal watercraft superstore. Telegraph Road in Bloomfield Hill. The best deals are at... went on their own first and ten tried to run a little sweep with Jeff Atkins and Troy Knight smelled it out they lost the yard in the play knocking them back to their own 14 yard line more than that and the drive also nicked up a little bit with the injury bug uh, Eric Anderson in there now playing at that inside linebacker the rush linebacker spot replacing Flint Fleming who came out of the game it, he walked off under his own power looks like a burner Pinched nerve in the neck. He should be back. But Anderson's not 100%. He's in there healthy because they don't have enough body. Second and 13. Motion. Corker move, but there was motion in the offensive line on the part of Campbell from Dallas. Now, the thing that Corker was mad about, he pointed at him. He made the move. He can make the move and then get back. He did, and that's exactly what happened. Another penalty hurts the Texans. And the penalty on Arnold Campbell. He's the guy that used to play for the Detroit Drive. They did not protect him in the expansion draft. And he wanted to have a good game. And so far, he's fought his team. Here's another big three yard. And that's the end of the third quarter, Larry. The clock is in favor of uh, the drive as they have been able to run things down and control things. At the end of three quarters of play, the drive still in the lead, 24 to 13, back with a fourth quarter in a moment. 103 yards passing on the night for Dallas, but 77 of those came on just two long passing plays, a 40 and a 37 yarder. Here it is, second and long. Motion from Kenny. Check it plenty of time, going the distance. Off the fingertips of Sam Moore. Oh, and he was open. He'd gotten behind the drive defender. David Evans might have made a great play, and Moore knocked the play clock down. He went into the boards hard, and of course there was padding, and the play clock was up above that. The quarterback could look at it, see how much time he's got. And I mean, Albert Jenkins airs this one out. He threw this a good 55 yards in the air. And Mike Evans 
just barely goes over the top, I think, destroyed the concentration a little bit of Moore as the ball went over top of his helmet and he was unable to bring it in. Don't knock down the little Caesar pizza sign. Third down and 16, still at the Dallas 11-yard line. Jenkins getting time to throw now to the sideline, wide open, he dropped it. Jeff Jenkins wide open at midfield. Let it get away. There is a big, big mistake. I mean, Jeff Jenkins is not going to get the ball any easier. Right at him in his eyes, and he just dropped it. He might have heard Tate Randall behind him because Randall had given him five yards. He still had to get four or five yards to get the first down. But it right. was a pass that should have been caught. And don't forget, after this game, we will pick our Subway player of the game. That'll come up after the game. George LaFrance, one of the leading candidates, along with our police at this point. Won't be Jeff Jenkins. 55-yard no. attempt by Jim Power. That won't make it. LaFrance running it out of the end zone. Got a little opening on the far side. Knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line by Frank Denard. Good return of 23, 24 yards by George LaFrance. You know, we talk about how quickly arena football games can turn around. Remember we talked about Denver possibly upsetting Tampa Bay and giving some help to the Detroit drive? Well, that one is now a final. Tampa Bay roared back in the fourth quarter and won it 30 to 13. That's the final. Well, things aren't working out just perfectly for the drive tonight. They need a score now. They need a good drive here early in the fourth quarter to see if they can widen the gap between them and the Texans. LaFrance, high motion. Sideline pass for Mullen. Can't slip the man, Jenkins, who makes the tackle at the 20-yard line of Dallas. Pick up of about eight on the play. But I think you see the drive going to their quick passing route. Let's go down to the sideline, see Tim Markham tells Art Fleischer that same thing. Left. Just left. Run uh, wing option to the wing. Wing option to the wing. Wing option to the wing. Left. Wing option to the wing. Wing option to the wing means the wing back reads the cover. The coverage. He makes, runs the route as he and the quarterback look at the coverage. They both have to be on the same page. Dixon and Mullen are out left. Throws right instead. LaFrance, a diving catch indeed. And a beauty. First down. Uh, the coverage was Jenkins giving LaFrance room. So they ran the out cut. Let's go back in again to Tim Marker. 34 draw. Common collected, draw play to the right side. At the 12 yard line, first down for the drive. Marching, hopefully, for another score. There's LaFrance going in motion left. There's Reddick, busting up the middle. There's an opening. Reddick, touchdown. Oh, he kept his feet the entire distance. 12 yards and nifty run by Reddick. Alvin Reddick of right. Reddick makes a great cut at the line of scrimmage that sets this play up. The play's not blocked that well, but watch the cut. He gets the ball, he runs into traffic, boom. There's the cut back through, runs away from number four, who is one of the wide receiver linebackers, Reggie Davis, who could not catch it. Reddick then gets his size and speed going, gets into the end zone, big score for the drive. Boyovich with the extra point attempt, and it's good. He skips it right off the top of the net as the drive returns to smash mouth football. Not a common play in the Arena Football League, but it works. Ten and a half to play in the game. It's now the drive, 31, and Dallas, 13.
that drive certainly improves the circumstances for Detroit. Tampa Bay has recorded their sixth victory of the season, and Detroit heading for theirs. Three plays, 29 yards, a 12-yard run by Reddick as Boyovich gets set to kick off again. His kickoffs have been, for the most part, very good tonight. Some of the faithful here at the Reunion Arena also are kind of heading for that hot Dallas night, too. They think that that touchdown by the drive might have put it out of reach. This kick stays on the right sideline and carries through and out of the back of the end zone. They're throwing a flag. They, I think the referee's going to judge that ball was out of bounds. Out of bounds on the outside of the net. Ball on the 20-yard line. And that gives Dallas possession at the 20-yard line. The ball just didn't hook, stayed out of bounds, and that's not considered kosher here in the Arena Football League. And the, and the problem with that is... Let him back in the game, that's all. Well, <laughs> Tim, doesn't like, back the game. Tim doesn't like it. He thinks that ball went out of at the end line rather than out of bounds. The referees ruled that it was out of bounds, which gives a great field position break to Dallas as they go to the shotgun. They get it at the 20. First and 10, Kenny. Motion one way, it's back right. Jenkins handles that and then makes a high throw over the head of the intended receiver, Sam Moore. Now you can judge for it yourself on this kickoff by Novo Boyovic that this thing crosses out of bounds. Now it misses the net, and the net is actually inbound. I mean, it's in a little ways from the sideline. So it can cross and still cross the end line. And apparently the referees rule that went out of bounds, which gives the ball to Dallas at 20, but they throw an incompletion on first down. Second and 10. Jenkins in the key this time. Again over the middle, almost intercepted. Rock Rickman, anticipating beautifully, got in front of Kenny and just couldn't hang on to the ball. Billy Harris doing a good job up front for the drive, also putting some pressure. You'll see Harris come in here late, number 50. Getting a hand on Jenkins, forcing him to throw it a little bit later than he wanted to, or earlier rather, and Richmond playing good defense, jumped in front, almost picked it off. Third down and 10. They're using Sam Moore as a lonesome end. He doesn't even come in the huddle. He stays out wide right in this instance. Being covered by Detroit's best defender, Mike Evans. Jeff Jenkins, the high motion. Good rush being put on Alfred Jenkins, a wobbler that's incomplete, and just in time because Troy Knight was about to make the sack. Well, it's coming unraveled now for Drew Pearson and the Dallas Texans. That score by Detroit really, I think, took it out of the Dallas team. Here you see Jenkins again getting pressure from the outside. Troy Knight, who's played very well tonight, he has the safety to his credit. Here forces a Bad pass from Jenkins, incomplete, brings on fourth down, Power will attempt the long field goal. Actually, I'd call it a good pass, Jim, because he was going to get sacked for a big loss. He found an open place in the field and threw the ball there. That was uh, probably a pretty heady move. But all depends on how you're looking at the glass <laughs> half empty or the glass half full. Well, he was going to suffer a very big sack. Instead, we've got a timeout where the Texans consider their options. Eight minutes remaining to play. The drive leading Dallas, 31-13. Still enjoying this arena football game at Reunion Arena, Dallas, Texas, as the Texans will attempt a lengthy field goal. This one from about their own 12-yard line, which will make it 46 yards in all. Good spot, good hit by Jim Power. Just missed it. Off the screen, LaFrance oh. trying to get running room. Get out of there. George doesn't make it out. Doesn't have to. That'll just bring it out. 
and give the drive possession. Good, smart move by George LaFrance on that play. Knew that, you know, if he was going to get out of the end zone, it wasn't going to be the five-yard line. So discretion being the better part of Valor, went down to a knee, took the touchback. Detroit first down and 10 on their own five. Hoping for that opening on the sideline, it didn't appear. Arch Leister wearing a new number. Number seven, as we told you earlier in the telecast, is usual number 10. Got kind of torn and ripped in the last few games. He switched to seven, and it's been a pretty good number for the drive tonight. Motion, Larry Hargrove. Whoa, loose ball saved at the one-yard line. Frank Harris out of Northern Michigan University that playing down here for Dallas makes the big play. Well, he just goes right inside Troy Knight. Troy Knight just let him get right inside of him, and Knight immediately comes out of the game as Tim Markham wants to talk with him. And Fleischer almost lost his number seven jersey because he had it all over it. Nicky Russell warming up on the sideline, who will be the quarterback next time around for the Texans, no doubt. Fleischer going for Mullen, overthrew him. Penalty flag is down. There was some grabbing and some clutching. Which way will this call go? Jeff Jenkins, I think, is going to get another holding call. And Tim the Markham beer got a little beer. beer. They're throwing beer cans at me. <laughs> Not a can, Tim. You can relax. It was a paper cup. Right there. Plastic cup, rather. Take the opportunity to cool off. Art. Art. Art, come here. So how did the penalty call go? Penalty call. I know it goes here. You can beat 80 and anything, whatever you want to go. No, no, no. Your call, okay? Oh, and you know, Tim Markham, when he made that call to, to, to Arch Fleester, Arch Fleester was standing right next to number 80, Jeff Jenkins, <laughs> and he said it loud enough so Jenkins could hear him. Well, things will get interesting in the final six and a half minutes of this game. The penalty was good for four yards, took the drive back to the five-yard line, and an automatic first down. So they get to start over again, first and ten from the five. LaFrance on the run. Looking for him, got him, over the shoulder, touchdown. 45 yards, Arch Leisure with George LaFrance. Wow, and there's the speed of George LaFrance. He just ran right by Alex Morris, and LaFrance, again, a situation where Schleister with time to throw, watch him set his feet. He's able to set his feet, plant the back foot, and go deep. LaFrance just outran Morris, Catches it at the five, holds on, goes into the end zone for six. Real nice pass by Art Schleister. And there you see George LaFrance's wife, Darlene, and his whole family. Darlene over here in Dallas from Arizona. And George is having himself a wonderful ball game. What a nice throw by Schleister, too. Deep. And right in front of number 80, Jeff Jenkins, Tim Markham says we can beat him. But he tells Fleischer it's his call, so he goes away from number 80 and hits LaFrance behind Morris. Boyovich kick is up and good. At seven with 5-11 to play in the game. The drive, 38. The Dallas Texans, 13. Subway's cold cut combo. Starts with the foundation of the freshest bread anywhere. Baked every four hours in every Subway store. Then cheese, three kinds of meat, and whichever of our nine tasty fixings you choose. Total construction costs a buck sixty-nine. It's time to eat. Subway six-inch cold cut combo. For a buck sixty-nine, we can build one for you. Well, a little commotion behind the drive bench. I think they're just uh, spilling a few more beer. <laughs> We've got a Red Wing fan up in the stands with us here, wearing a T-shirt for the wing. This will calm down. 
the frustrated Texan fans have just seen this game get completely out of their hands. Well, they vented some of their frustration. You take a look at the scoring drive. They vented their frustration on the drive bench, which is right in front of them. They're throwing beers all over them. Couple of plays for that scoring drive of 45 yards, and Boyovic puts a kick back in the end zone to Jeff Jenkins. He's going to try to slip up the sideline, but Tate Randall pushes him out of bounds. Although Frank Harris was there, kind of hugging the runner and seeing if he couldn't provide some protection that way. Yeah, there goes the beer throwing fan, I yeah, think. The, uh, and he's getting high fives all the way up and down the aisle as the police escort him out of the arena. The amazing thing is he's still got a beer left. It's the drive and Columbus from Columbus next Friday, 7.30 on pass as the drive continues their push for a fourth Arena Bowl championship. Jenkins overthrows his intended receiver, Sam Moore who was just inside of Evans and a little bit open. Look, Mickey Russell, excuse me. He knew the quarterback change was coming and forgot about it. Well, he certainly has got a pretty good gun because he drilled that one and overthrew the receiver, but looks like he short arms it a little bit in his throwing motion, and yet he sure got it there in a hurry. Jenkins finishes the night 9 for 19, 103 yards, and like we said earlier, 77 of those on two pathway completions. Russell, deep drop, chased out of it and sacked by Billy Harris. Ted Hennings was there too, but Harris made the sack of the tackle at the 10-yard line. Well, with 3.45 left to play, Dallas got to throw caution to the wind. So can the Detroit dry defensive line. Billy Harris gives a hand on Russell. Russell tries to get away, but Billy won't let him go, and he makes the sack. He's been close a couple of times in this game, Billy Harris has. But he hasn't gotten a sack until that one. Third down and 13. Back in his end zone and being chased high, but he gets two pass completed. Big gainer out to midfield. Smiley Elmore turned a little screen pass into a first down for Dallas. There's a nice call by Drew Pearson, the coach at that point. You know, you know that the defensive line is coming real hard, rushing your passer, not worrying about anything in regards to the run. So they just let the defensive line come, but Russell run back there and just let the fullback come out underneath with one blocker. That one blocker got enough of Alvin Reddick to free Elmore up enough so that he could get downfield and get the first down on the third and long. That's a big conversion for them. 16 yards, and I think that's their first third down conversion. Russell tries to lob this one out. Oh, boy, you could see that hit coming up. Elmore nailed by Reddick when that little uh, lob in the air just, he had to wait so long for it to get there. Reddick got to line him up pretty good. <laughs> Tate Randall is looking at him pretty hard, too. We'd like to say hello to Scott Fisher who's the director of finance for the Detroit Drive, and we want to make sure that he and his friends that are watching this ball game in his house have a great time. The reason we want him to have a good time is because he's the guy that signs the check. Whoa, Scott, enjoy. And all your friends enjoy. Nice to have you on. Two minutes left in this one. The drive comfortably on top by 25. Second and 10, Russell all the way. Incomplete. <laughs> for David Evans, who was the only man deep enough to make a catch. Well, on team. He tried to, I think, keep his feet in bounds. He knew he was getting near the end line. He was trying to keep his feet in bounds and concentrate on the ball. And uh, at that point, there was just a little bit too much for him to think about. So he's trying to think about keeping his feet down, lost concentration on the ball, but he held on. It would have been an interception drive football at the five-yard line. Meanwhile, goes back to third down for Dallas their own 25. Remember our Subway hero of the game, most valuable player, will be named at the end of the ball game. Third down and 10. Russell under a big rush. Can't get anybody open because he had to unload that before he was corked. <laughs> John Corker did get a pretty good piece of Russell. Let's put it this way. After Russell delivered the ball, the sun went down because Corker was all over him, jumped right up over the blocker. 
58 seconds remaining in the game. So they give them the one minute warning and uh, the Detroit Drive will win this one. Good game for them. Uh, they fought off a challenge by Dallas in the third quarter. Offensive and defensively, they did a real solid job. The key has to be, Jim, I think their dominance of the clock. They did not run as slick an offense as they might want, getting as many points as they would like, but they controlled the football for such lengthy periods of time that Dallas uh, couldn't get back in the game. And I think the other key is that they scored. You know, when, they, when they had a position to get the lead, and Dallas came back and made a little run out of them. They came back down and scored. We basically took the crowd out of the game and reestablished control. Well, the, the police took some of the crowd out of the game after, yeah. the, after the beer yeah. throwing. One, one gentleman was <laughs> escorted out by the uh, Federales here in Dallas. So the crowd is left enjoying the music and the fun and the cheerleaders. What would a Texas football game be without cheerleaders? The Texans have their own brand. Fourth down and ten. Mickey Russell tries to scramble. Nice throw. Got more for the first down. David Evans pushed him out of bounds at the 11. But that's the second completion in six tries for Russell. A 13-yard game, the first down. And boy, it's tough. Porker is down. Russell is down. There have been some collisions here in the final second. Pass was complete for a first down. Russell slow to get up, but he's going to get back in the ball game if he goes over to see Drew Pearson. Parker also slow to get up. Eric Anderson now coming off. He was playing injured. He's got a bad knee. Reddick come in and replace him. Parker stays in the ball game up front with Billy Harris and Ted Henning. It's just inside the 12 yard line. We'll call it the 12. First down and 10, Dallas. Lob for the back of the end zone. Tate Randall was there on the coverage of Sam Moore, who is having a frustrating night. Three catches for 90 yards. Not bad stats for some, but not good stats for Sam Moore. And he's made two remarkable catches, too, during this ball game. It just has been a frustrating night. They've been hurt by penalties. Defensively, their secondary just couldn't run with Jerry Mullen. And man, they threw more interference calls on the Dallas secondary than they probably throw all year against anybody else. And the protection has been much improved for Arch Leacher. Just a couple of times when he had to scramble out of trouble. Most of the time he's had time to throw the football set up and, and do what he wanted to do with it. Second and ten. Two receivers to the left of Russell. And look out. He got him. John Corker. Roll him over for the sack. There you see. F-A-C on his towel sack. John Corker, that's his stock in trade. He is the man that's got to get the pass rush going. And, you know, when you go both ways, you get pretty tired. John's like, remember Jim Brown when Jim Brown used to play football? He would look like he could barely make it and barely get up. But he does, and he gets back in the game, and he plays hard when he's there. Third down and six. Complete. To Kenny, knocked back to the 10-yard line by Gary Mullen, and then sealed by Dixon with nine seconds left. A timeout is called by Dallas. Whoa. Well, these two teams have to play again before this season is out, and that's a strange call in a game that's determined. Well, I tell you what, Dallas has got right, how you, doing? you know, they're, they can't, they couldn't afford to lose this ball game because basically they're out of the playoff picture at this point. And I just think that Drew Pearson is sending a message to his guys that we are going to fight until the last dog is dead. And that message, while it may not help this year, certainly will help as he goes down the rest of the season. Well, the only Texans to make it to the end zone tonight are the cheerleaders. And they are there finishing off this game. So far, the defense of the drive has been outstanding, surrendering but 13 points, a couple of field goals, and one touchdown. That will be the lowest point total Dallas has scored all season long by far. But the lowest point total prior to this game was 23. <laughs> they're going to try to add to it. The official just had to stop play because the cheerleaders were still going in the end zone. Its coverage could have been crowded. <laughs> one of them could have gotten hurt, too. Fourth down from the seven-yard line. Nicky Russell, obviously going the distance. 
out of the corner of the end zone. No good. Sam Moore again frustrated, but nobody could catch that one. And a penalty flag for what Moore just said to the official. And the official didn't like it at all. I mean, he threw the flag, and he threw it right at the back of the helmet of Sam Moore. Whatever he said, it was very, very unpleasant. And that's just losing your cool. Sam Moore felt he should have had an interference call. Mike Evans has been covering him all night and, it, and was on him real tight again. And, and even if Moore, Moore couldn't have caught the ball anyway. It was overthrown so badly. Why did he jump into the referee? But he did, and he gets the big penalty. Unnecessary or unsportsmanlike conduct, probably. The guy with the beer couldn't have caught that ball. No. Gone. 4.1 seconds left to play, and there's George LaFrance. My family's up there, he said. There's hey, George Henley. Down. First down, Denver. The drive will get one more play from their own 15-yard line, it looks like. Well, it has been a terribly, terribly mistake-filled night for Dallas. And, and like conduct some instances, against the defense. they deserve it themselves. Henley. First down. Well, John Witkowski will get the quarterback no, in the final got, four seconds. John joining the drive in mid-season here, or, well, uh, late after the season was underway, anyhow. And it's moved out to the 23-yard line. That's what that penalty does to Dallas. You realize that with that penalty, I believe Dallas has had an penalty in yep. arena football. Better than 50 yards. Yep. That's a lot of penalties to give up. Alfred Fields is the man in, number 22, with Kowski to throw away the final play. Went the distance. The official had to duck from that one. Incomplete and the horn sound. 80 yards in penalties for Dallas on the night. Jim, you were absolutely right about that. But all it added up to was a Detroit Drive victory. Their sixth of the season. Drew Pearson and Tim Markham shaking hands and the final score, the drive, 38, the Dallas Texans, 13. Sports coverage of the Arena Bowl champions, the Detroit Drive, has been brought to you in part by Anderson Sales, by Big Boy Restaurant, Come in for dinner and see what there's more to love at Big Boy. Quality food since 1936. By Blockbuster Video. By Budweiser, the king of beer. Nothing beats a bud. By Little Caesars Pizza. By Mobile One. Mobile One synthetic motor oil. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? By Murray's Discount Auto Store. By Ramcorn Restaurant. The Ramcorn has that personal touch for you. And by Subway Sandwiches. Back on a winning track, the Detroit Drive record their sixth victory of the season following a Monday loss to Tampa Bay. And that keeps those two teams, Tampa and Detroit, tied atop the Arena League standings at six and one. Tonight, it was the Drive thoroughly controlling the Dallas Texans and winning by a score of 38 to 13. Our subway player of the game, George LaFrance. Yeah, I think you got to give it to George LaFrance. Uh, he's got two big touchdown passes. One of them uh, in the fourth quarter set the crowd out of here. Four catches, 95 yards, two touchdowns. Here's the first one in the first half. Fleischer goes back. Some kind of a mistake in coverage by Dallas. And LaFrance was wide open behind the secondary and makes the easy touchdown catch. But often those are difficult catches when you know you're all alone and you've got to make that grab. Well, we saw Jeff Jenkins for Dallas drop one when he was wide open. Here it is in the second half. Now, this is just a, a great throw by Schleicher. A little underthrown, but watch LaFrance adjust to the ball, catch it, hold on while he's being hit as he beat Morris, goes into the end zone for the touchdown. So George LaFrance is our... Subway player of the game with two touchdowns, four catches, better than 95 yards. Big night for George and a big night really for the Detroit Drive. As they came in here having to win to keep pace with Tampa. Uh, they controlled the football real well, and I think defensively they were outstanding. The other guy that got some consideration as a real good two-way game tonight, I think, 
you got to look at Alvin Reddick. But LaFrance with the two big touchdown chances, including the clincher, you got to give him the player of the game. A 25 point victory for the drive tonight in Dallas. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. 13 victory for the drive over the Texans and Jim Brandstetter, as we talked about at the top of the telecast. Some of the things the drive needed to do came true. Schleister played better. Novo Vojovic kicked better. Yeah, and I think the big thing for Schleister playing better was the fact that he got real good protection by the offensive line for the Detroit drive. And against Tampa a week ago, he didn't get that kind of protection. He was able to find the receivers and get the ball to them. Uh, he wasn't running and dodging people and throwing on the run. And also, I think Tim Markham called a good game. He, he called more quick passes. So the three-step drop and the rush couldn't get to Art Schleicher, and I think that's one of the reasons why he played well, but the other thing, and I know you agree, you you can't win in any league in football unless you play great defense, and I think tonight the drive played great defense, that's and that the, was the Michigan coming out of Jim Brandstetter <laughs> here. you got to play defense, but I'm sure Tim Markham, who talked about it this afternoon, was happy you know, too. The worst you can do if you shut the other guy out <laughs> is tie, and, and, and the defense was the difference, I think. The time of possession was great by the offense, but defensively, uh, they shut down the big guy, Atron Ken Kenny. He he didn't he wasn't Not a, a factor, factor. And, and that was big I think in this game. Moore caught a couple big passes, but none of them for touchdowns. So defensively, I think the drive really that was the story of the game. Back to winning, six and one on the season, still in first place. It's on to Columbus next week for a matchup that'll be on task too on Friday night. The Columbus Thunderbolts at 7:30 on Friday. Don't miss that one as the drive continues to try for their fourth straight Arena Bowl championship. That puts a wrap on our coverage of drive football tonight. Be sure to catch the rest of the action next Friday night as Arch Fleister and company take on Columbus. Game time, 7.30. Stay with us now for post-game racing report with Trackside at Ladbrook DRC. Now for Jim Brandstetter, I'm Larry Adderley saying, it's from Dallas. Once again, the final score, the drive 38, the Texans 13.